Hey everyone and welcome back to Home and Harvest. I'm Kristen and today I'd like to take you on a little garden tour. So my garden didn't end up being quite as big as I had initially imagined it to be this year, but that is okay because I'm in love with the garden that I have here. So I'm gonna start you out on our porch, which is where a lot of things um, kind of are up here. Okay, so over here, of course I like to keep my herbs on the porch. So that's a lot of what you'll find up here. I have some ambrosia dill. I've never grown this before. So it's kind of thriving and looking sad at the same time, but it smells great. And I'm waiting for it to get a little bit bigger before I use it. Down here, I have some green onion that's growing nicely. It needs a little haircut. That's all you gotta do is just kind of cut and come again with green onion. And then some rosemary down at the bottom is growing beautifully down here. And at the top, I just put um, an extra little zinnia flower I had up here. None of them are blooming yet, but I am so excited for them to bloom. I can't wait to see them. Over here, I have some mint. This was actually, if you've seen our older videos, this was a grocery store rescue. It was very sad in the winter time and it was a live plant from the grocery store. So I planted it and it looks great. And this basil is actually also from the grocery store. I got both of those and it's been growing beautifully and you know, getting bigger and bushier. So don't give up on those grocery store um, herbs. This is a dark purple opal basil that I cannot wait to try once it gets a little bit bigger. It's slowing, growing pretty slowly. And then down here, I have two of these winter savory plants that we found on um, at our local Ace Hardware on discount. So I haven't tried them. I think I put some on potatoes before, but I had a bunch of other herbs on there. So I have to give it a like a good try. So that's all like right outside my front door. And over here, I had like all of my plant starts lined up here all crazy on the porch. So I only have a few extra tomato plants now up here. And this is some lettuce. It's like a baby lettuce mix. And I had seen this way of growing it that you could grow, get like a big bag of soil and cut it out and then just sprinkle them on top and they can grow year round like that like if you keep a cover over them. So I thought I would try out using one of these trays and just put the soil in there and grow it. But I think with our move um, and just a lot of weather changes, a lot of it died out. So it actually kind of helped it to breathe a little bit. And these ones are doing really well now that what's left, but that's why it kind of looks all spotty. And I never put drain holes in the bottom of it either. I would should have done that but I'm just kind of letting it do what it wants to do right now. And we'll see if we get any or not. <laughs> um, down here, this is Olivia's plant that she got and saved. It's um, a mojito mint plant. We like mint. Archer likes to come out here and just chew on the mint leaves. Um, here I have a toothache plant. I actually planted five little seedlings in there. One of them is starting to grow. But toothache plants are so cool. They um, are a medicinal plant, and when they grow and get bigger, they have these beautiful flowers on them, and you can chew them, and it makes your mouth go a little bit numb. They use them medicinally for a toothache. But you can also like crush it up and put it on a scrape or something like that, and it's supposed to help. So the kids are really excited to make their mouths go numb with that, and it's safe to, to do, so. That's a, an exciting one for us. I also have some chamomile here that I'm hoping will grow up. We can make our own tea this fall or, you know, sooner if it grows by then. I feel like everything is just gonna grow forever and never produce anything. But it's slowly coming along. I'm just being impatient. So yeah, these are my extra tomato plants. I have so many tomato plants, different varieties. So if you want to know more about all the varieties of tomato plants, I'll show you the rest of them soon. Um, I can do a separate video on that, but otherwise I have like 30 different varieties. So 
Uh, I have some catnip growing right here. It's not just for your cats. It can be used medicinally as well. And then, oh, here's another tomato. Here's another tomato. <laughs> I just couldn't throw out the extras, so I'm letting them all grow. And then I planted three peppers here today. I just did this. So I have fish peppers, Anaheim peppers, and this German paprika. So I'm gonna hopefully dry it out and grind it up and have our own spices. So I'm excited about that. We have some strawberries growing here. And then I have some more herbs over here. I have more basil because I can never have too much basil. So I tried to really pack this one in here. And then some cilantro and parsley down there. I think eventually I'm gonna plant a lot more herbs because I feel like there's, you know, you're just kind of picking a few here and there, but there's never enough to get like a big bunch that you would get from the store. So that's what I would like to do in the future. All right, let's go on down in front of the porch and I'll show you down there. So we have these hanging flower baskets. I have zinnias, cosmos, I think, maybe, I don't remember. And some nasturtium and they're doing really well. I have three of them. Coxcomb. The coxcomb, but that's not the coxcomb. Huh. Those are, I don't remember what these ones are. I'm th I want to say cosmos, but I'm not sure. I do have some coxcomb that I like put all around. That's a celosia. So here, oh, tomatoes. All of my tomatoes. These are the extra tomatoes that I didn't plant in my garden. But yeah, I had to, I just had to keep them all. So we'll see. I'm gonna be overrun in the late summer. Um, this is my tot soy bed. And I had pak choy here too, but it all bolted because it was just too hot. I just brought all my plant starts and put them here, but it was really cold when we left Iowa, which is where we just moved from. And it was already really hot down here. So a lot of the plants that were just getting ready to go into the ground, it was a little too late for them here. So the pak choy, it was too late. So I pulled it all out and I've just planted this, um, I can't remember what it's called this tiny little baby corn. They grow these little stalks. They said it's good to grow in pots, but it, there's like two corns, corns, two corns per stalk. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're like really small ones. So that, that's exciting. So I planted nine of them here. They have yet to start coming up. Wasn't it orchard something? Something, something. <laughs> You're on to it. I don't remember though. Um, tot soy is doing well. It's much more heat resistant than a bok choy, but um, it's very similar in its use and it has like a mild flavor, good for stir fries and all that. The um, caterpillars and worms have been loving it, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, the inside leaves are still pretty good and we are waiting on our store to get some BT back in stock, which is good for those. I have diatomaceous earth, but they doesn't bother them. So we have to get some BT spray for that and then they should be fine, but they're growing beautifully. Over here, I have my little lettuce patch. Here's the coxcomb flower up there. I only had two of these kinds of lettuce survive, but these are um, black seeded Simpson lettuce. They are delicious. They're more heat tolerant than other varieties. So if you're growing lettuce like into the summer, this is definitely the way to go. It's doing great. It hasn't really had any bug problems. It tastes really good. And I'm actually gonna make a salad with it tonight. And then over here, I have some Swiss chard. It's rainbow chard. And it hasn't really gotten any bigger since we moved. I've just fertilized it. So I'm hoping that'll give it a little kickstart. But I think our move was just such a shock to our plants. They've kind of all reacted a little differently. Some have done well, some have kind of been stunted. So we're just gonna give them the best chance we can and, you know, move on in the fall if they don't, if they don't really grow. If they don't grow, we'll just have plenty of tomatoes to make up we for it. We will have plenty of tomatoes. <laughs> the tomatoes are growing beautifully. Um, over here, I had some arugula that hadn't gotten any bigger, but it was even as a little tiny plant, it was starting to bolt. So I pulled it all out and I just scattered some English lavender here for Olivia. She loves that. So that was her 
pack it and we've had a lot of trouble getting it to grow in the past so I'm just gonna hope that it grows here for her. So yeah that's the front of the house on off the porch and then we also put some garden beds around the side of the house too so I'll show you those before we go down to the full garden beds. Oh there's some nice um, cicadas that have died in my garden beds over here. <laughs> Fertilizer. <laughs> yeah. It's all natural and organic, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, this is like the only time of day that this part of the house gets sunny. So nothing's really growing great over here, but I do have some kale. This is the Ragged Jack kale. I actually got it as my free seed from Baker Creek, but I've heard wonderful things about it. So I'm hoping it gets bigger. I also just fertilized this too, and I can tell that this one is already growing a little bit, but I don't know, we'll see. This is like um, the Lacinato or dinosaur kale. It's called Nero de Toscana. It has a lot of different names, but that one's kind of growing, but this is my kale bed. And then over here, I planted some okra from seed. I have some little weeds coming up through here. I need to weed my garden. You'll notice it on the other side very well. But yes, this is okra. It's an emerald okra. I've never grown okra before, but I'm super excited about it. And then over here, I planted some strawberry watermelons. And I planted two because I'm planning to just let them vine out into the yard and go this way, which, you know, Michael might not love with mowing, but, you know, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's all they have there because watermelons need a lot of space. So those are coming up. And let me take you down to our big gardens plots. So welcome to my full garden beds. I have two of these. Please don't judge, this is real life and I have not, I didn't water my garden last night so it's nice and dry for you today. And I also haven't weeded. We had like several days of rain and then now we've had some sun but I just haven't gotten out here so it's pretty weedy. But it's, this is like the most beautiful thing to me. I know it's just a simple garden. I don't have like this fancy fence around it but it's like, it's my real garden. <laughs> and. I love this archway that we have gotten for it. I have on either side of it, I've planted some beans. They're the, oh, what, I'm, I should have had a list of all these names. Chinese red noodle beans. And they're gonna grow up over the top and hang down underneath. And it's gonna be beautiful, I cannot wait. They've just started popping up, You'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but here I've actually had a lot of damage to this bed because the rain was supposed to come down the center divot here. It's kind of like goes down to our creek. But for some reason, when it rained the first time we were here, we had this heavy torrential rain and it all just went through my garden. <laughs> so it kind of washed away a little bit of things and um, moved some things around. So some survived and some didn't. So let me show you what I have over here. Um, so on either side of my bed, I have peppers that I'm growing. I kept them in pots. They're growing super slow. But I have some shishito peppers, which I saved the seeds from. That's one, like, I didn't even buy those seeds. You can just save things from the grocery store. Don't think you have to buy everything. And then I have some jalapeno peppers. Some natapenos. Those are actually jalapenos that don't have any heat. So that's gonna be fun, great for the kids. And habanadas are like a habanero, but it's actually like a sweet pepper. It has no heat. Not even the seeds have any heat on them. They just have like a good citrusy snacking pepper flavor. So Olivia said she can't wait for her cousins to come over so she can play a trick on them. I shouldn't say that in this video because they're probably <laughs> gonna watch it. True. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So this first bed, was all cabbages and I only have, I think there's three left that survived. And this side, I actually just planted some sugar baby watermelons right here on this side. 
so they can kind of vine out too as needed. And then my second row is broccoli. And again, you can see these two look really good, but then they kind of die out back there. And then this next row, I have one Brussels sprout. They're like purple Brussels sprouts. And I lost two, but there's one left. And behind that right I have there. some, yep, yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have the broccoli rob is in the back here. So that one's looking pretty good. This row here is doing pretty well. And this is cauliflower. It's a snowball cauliflower. So I've got like four of those. And then on this side, I had some eggplants growing here that I was really excited about, but they are all, they all just completely died. So I dug them up, I planted a flower there to, you know, for the grave site. <laughs> <laughs> and this thing is such a fun story. If you saw, if you watch our channel, um, before we moved, I was packing up the kitchen and underneath all of our pots and pans, I found this old, old sweet potato that was buried in the back of the cabinet and it had grown all these roots on it. And I was like, it was hilarious, but I was also like, this little guy's just trying to survive. <laughs> I like, I have to grow it. So I was asking like, can I grow this still? And I threw it in some dirt and I brought the bucket with the dirt in it and it sprouted when we got here and it's like been thriving. So I just moved it out here a few days ago and put it in this little spot here. So hopefully we'll have some sweet potatoes from this little sad guy that got forgotten in the bottom of my cabinet. And that'll be fun. I planted some squash and zucchinis down here. Those are growing. Those came from seeds, so they're looking really good. And then at the very end, I have some cantaloupe. And those will vine out as well. All right, this is my second garden plot. It's in the shade right now, but it gets a lot of sun in the beginning of the day. And as you can see, this is where I keep all of my tomatoes and I just love every single one of them, even though some are doing better, some are doing worse. I actually just came out here and pruned all of them yesterday, so they should start doing a lot better, getting more airflow. And again, if you wanna see more in-depth of the varieties of tomatoes I have, um, I can do a separate video on that. Maybe when they get a little bigger and start producing, I can show you around all the tomatoes that I have. I have more peppers over here. There's banana peppers, there's lunchbox peppers. Those are those little ones you get at the grocery store in the big bag. We saved the seeds from those. These are Jimmy Nardello peppers and there's only one alive in there. But I'm excited about those. They're supposed to be really good. And some bell peppers. As you can tell, none of my peppers that I have are really spicy because I don't want my kids to come out here and you know, I want them to be able to come out here and pick out whatever they want and eat it off the vine and enjoy it and not worry about getting a spicy pepper, so. Even though daddy would like Daddy spicy. would like some. I'm, we might keep like one on the porch with a sign on it, like this is the spicy one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then this is our other trellis over here. And I have cucumbers that are gonna grow on it. So this side is the China Jade cucumbers. They're really long. Um, those long green ones, kind of like you see in the store, but a little different variety. So those will be really good for slicing and snacking on. And then on the other side, I have some pickling cucumbers. These are, these are the Chicago pickling cucumbers. This one's doing really good. So I'm going to train them all up over here and hopefully we'll be able to make pickles and yeah, I, I mean, I just like snacking on them anyway, so <laughs> that'll be good. So yeah, not a lot to, a lot of variety in here. I've got tomatoes on that side. And then beside my tomatoes, right here, I have some beans. So we have the long noodle beans growing on that side. These are bush beans and they're dragon tongue bush beans. So they're, um, they have like these purple stripes on them. They're really cool and they're supposed to be really good. So I can't wait to try those. And then here I have two different types of corn growing. I have an early sun glow corn and bodacious sweet corn. So my idea this year was to grow a lot of different varieties of things 
lots of the tomatoes and the corn and different kind of beans and peppers so we can find out what we really like as a family and then grow a more concentrated variety next year. And then it's always fun to grow new things and try new things, so. Yeah, that's my garden. Let me show you really quick are my sunflowers. So just to cross the driveway over here are my sunflowers. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of things in the background that look beautiful, like our magnolia tree, we have a fire bush, these hostas. There was an older lady that lived here before us and she just had an eye for this beautiful landscaping. So we really appreciate all of the trees and shrubs and everything that are here. There's also a lot of really amazing things growing on our property. We have some apples and blackberries. So maybe I can get my husband to give you a little nature tour of God's garden in a future video. I also Hmm, maybe I'll show you at the end, but come look at my sunflowers because I know you're waiting on that. Now I just sprinkled diatomaceous earth all over these because they were getting a little eaten up. So that's why they're all white on the top. But they are, they survived. These guys sat in the front seat with me. The kids were all in the back of the van. These were in a bucket in the front seat because I wanted them to survive. But these are all sunflowers. They're the first thing I planted when we got here and they are mammoth sunflowers. So they're gonna grow like really big and have just that big sunflower head. Supposedly you can eat the whole thing, but we'll see if we try that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't wait for these to bloom and I hope next year we can just till this whole area, let them reseed, plant some more wildflowers here. I think it would be beautiful in this spot. So across the street again, <laughs> let's go back this way. I just can hang out in my yard all day. I love my plants. Mm -hmm. So right here between our two garden plots is a small hibiscus bush. And I'm excited to watch it grow because it actually was planted here in memory of the lady that lived here before us that started this beautiful garden with her landscaping. And we just have a little piece of her to carry on and to what we're putting into this property. So it's a special little part of the yard for me too. It would have some beautiful flowers on it right now if our son would stop picking them off. Oh. <laughs> it has bloomed several times. It looks beautiful. It's very healthy. It so. is, it is. It's a happy plant. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, that is my vegetable and herb and flower garden this year for the summer. I'll be starting some new things in the fall that I'm already excited about and itching to put in the ground. So stick around, hit the subscribe button so you can watch my garden grow and join me for more garden tours. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!